Welcome back to channel integral final back with another reaction video if you're new to this channel make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it to the friends and of course do not forget to subscribe today i'm going to be reacting to how do muslims view the birth of jesus a big shout out to the person that suggested this without wasting time let's get into the video from among the countless billions of women that have ever walked this planet and breathed its air only one woman had a chapter named after her in God's final revelation, the Qur'an. Only one woman has been mentioned in that Qur'an an unmatched 34 times. Only one woman had a remarkable birth, and then she herself gave birth to her child in a unique, miraculous way. This was none other than the wondrous Mary, Maryam, peace be upon her, whose story of profound faith and virtue the Qur'an confirms time and time again and immortalizes. In one authentic tradition, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, included her in such elite company that he identified her among the very select human beings that have ever perfected their faith. The similarities between her times and ours and her challenges and ours make the account of Mary, peace be upon her, so relevant for us. Consider her circumstances, her society, her culture. Mary was born among the latter generations of the Israelites whose regard for religion had largely disintegrated. She was born in a world riddled with disbelief, a world that mocked God's signs and dismissed God's guidance, kind of similar to our secular, a-religious world today. But none of that phased Mary. She remained unwavering in her conviction, despite the world that mocked her beliefs. She was a beacon of light and a torchbearer for faith in a world that was an abyss of darkness and doubts. In any case, this woman has a particularly esteemed rank with Almighty God. And that is why Muslims are called to rehearse her virtues and to quench their thirst for guidance through the fountain that is her story. So who was Mary? What were her roots? Where did she stem from? Allah speaks about this in the Quran and he says, <laughs> So from the line of Adam, God chose Noah. And from the line of Noah, God chose the family of Abraham. And from the family of Abraham, through the line of Isaac, then Jacob, God chose the family of Imran, all as the best of humanity in their respective times. The wife of Imran was Hannah, known in English as Saint Anne, a righteous, virtuous woman who had longed for a child but could never have one. Historians mention that one day she saw a scene that she could not bear. It was a mother bird placing food inside the mouth of her helpless hatchlings, the chicks. And so her heart broke at that moment and she earnestly appealed to God to grant her the blessing of motherhood. And ultimately and eventually, she found out that her prayer was in fact answered and that she was now pregnant. Allah says about this in the Qur'an. In an authentic tradition, Abu Hurairah, the great companion, narrates that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said that every newborn comes out from their mother's womb screaming. And that is because the devil pokes at them as they are born, except for two, except for Mary and her child, meaning Jesus Christ, peace be upon them both. Abu Hurairah, the narrator, says, 
And if you want the confirmation of this, you can find it in God's words. And he would recite that previous verse. In other words, it was the prayer of the mother of Mary that armored Mary and her offspring from being poked by the devil. And thus Mary was born in a very unique, remarkably peaceful, tranquil way. But how would Hannah now uphold her vow? Because as she said, the male is not like the female. In other words, she had promised to dedicate her child in the service of God's house, the holy house in Jerusalem. But this was an occupation that was customarily for the males. They were the priests that were the caretakers of the house. However, in due time, signs kept surfacing that Mary was no ordinary child. There was something very special about this girl, so much so that these scholars of scripture, the Torah of the time, would compete with one another as to who would become the caretaker of Mary. This was an extraordinary scene folded away in human history, lost knowledge, but Allah insisted to revive it in the Quran. Historians gather that these scholars of scripture, all competing for the honor of mentoring her, said we will cast our pens, the pens that we only use to transcribe God's sacred word, in the Jordanian River. Whatever pen does not float away is the pen of the man that God wants to take care of this precious girl. And lo and behold, all of their pens float away except that of one man to cause them all to understand that God did not want her in the care of just any scholar, not even a scholar of sacred scripture, but the scholar who was himself a prophet, Zechariah, peace and blessings be upon him. About this, Allah says, In the shade of Prophet Zechariah, peace be upon him, and under his tutelage, Mary grew to learn the sacred sciences of devotion to Almighty God. He had the exclusive honor of entering her chamber, only he had the keys to it, which allowed him the privilege of serving her, but even allowed him an opportunity at times to learn from his own student and apprentice. Allah captures this in the Quran as well and says, It was reported that when Zechariah, peace and blessings be upon him, entered her quarters, he would find something very strange there. He would find food in there that he didn't bring. And even if someone were to have a set of keys that he was exclusively entitled to, he was finding fruits there in the winter that are only available in the summer, and fruits there in the summer that are only available in the winter. And so he was perplexed and asked Mary, how is this possible? And she reminded him not to calculate when it comes to God's grace. The Quran says that it was at that very moment that Zechariah turned in supplication to God for a child, dismissing the factor of his old age, refusing to calculate the elderly infertility of his wife at that moment. And it was at that moment that God granted him with a miraculous child, Yahya, John the Baptist, peace and blessings be upon him. Let us now move to the height of Mary's story itself in the chapter Maryam, the chapter Mary, and let us reflect on it uninterrupted as God asks us to do in this passage. Mm-hmm. 
فاتخذت من دونهم حجابا فأرسلنا إليها روحنا فتمثل لها بشرا سويا قالت إني أعوذ بالرحمن منك إن كنت تقيا قال إنما أنا رسول ربك لأهب لك غلاما زكيا قالت أنا يكون لي غلام ولم يمسسني بشر ولم أك بغيا قال كذلك قال ربك هو علي هين ولنجعله آية للناس ولنجعله آية للناس ورحمة منا وكان أمرا مقضيا فحملته فانتبذت به مكانا قصيا فأجاء إلى جذع النخلة قالت يا ليتني مت قبل هذا قالت يا ليتني مت قبل هذا وكنت نسيا منسيا فناداها من تحتها ألا تحزني ألا تحزني قد جعل ربك تحتك سريا وهزي إليك بجذع النخلة تساقط عليك رطبا جنيا فكلي واشربي وقري عينا فإما ترين من البشر أحدا فقولي إني نذرت للرحمن صوما فقولي إني نذرت للرحمن صوما فلن أكلم اليوم إنسيا فأتت به قومها تحمله قالوا يا مريم لقد جئت شيئا فريا يا أخت هارون ما كان أبوك امرا سوء وما كانت أمك بغيا فأشارت إليه قالوا كيف نكلم من كان في المهد صبيا قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا وجعلني مباركا أينما كنت وأوصاني بالصلاة والزكاة ما دمت حيا وبرا بوالدتي ولم يجعلني جبارا شقيا والسلام علي يوم ولدت ويوم أموت ويوم أبعث حيا ذلك عيسى بن مريم قول الحق الذي فيه يمترون ما كان لله أن يتخذ من ولد سبحانه إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له كن فيكون وإن الله ربي وربكم فاعبدوا هذا صراط مستقيم There is so much to learn from this single day in the life of Maryam. Peace and blessings be upon her such as clarifying that the Holy Spirit was in reality the Archangel Messenger Gabriel, peace and blessings be upon him, who carried the message of God to the messengers on earth, but was not God himself. 
It also reiterates that Jesus Christ, peace and blessings be upon him, his central message was delivering people to God, not to himself. Of course, through him, meaning through his teachings and through his example. But there are two powerful lessons from the story of Mary herself that we wish to conclude with. First and foremost, God told Mary, shake towards yourself the trunk of the palm tree, ripe edible dates will fall upon you to eat. He is telling a woman to shake the trunk of a palm tree after delivering a child when the strongest of men do not shake palm trees to bring dates down. That's just not how it works. The profound lesson here is engaging your reality while relying on God. You see, one of the great Imams of Islam, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, heard about a group of people that stay in the house of worship all day in the mosque and say, we've put our full trust in God. He said, these people have no trace of knowledge whatsoever. They are so shallow on on their understanding of religion. He said, do they not hear God saying to Mary, shake towards you the trunk of the palm tree? Do what is in your hands as if it's all up to you while knowing that you and everything in your hands is all up to God. Secondly, Mary, peace be upon her, witnessed a powerful miracle. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as an infant speaking in the cradle. And that was enough for her to feel reassured, to dispel her anxieties, to bolster her faith that God is going to be with me no matter what I have to encounter right now of accusations or otherwise. A few hours later, her people heard the infant speaking in the cradle, and it only increased them in rejection of Mary, and they disbelieved in God. Here, God reminds us that proofs are useless. Miracles are ineffective for people not willing to believe. You see, Mary sought faith, and so she found it. And her people, thinking it was convenient, sought doubt, and so they found it. Just as blind faith is imprudent, unwise, un-Islamic even, stubborn rejection can lead a person into blindness, into faithlessness, into destruction. And hence, Allah says in more than one place in the Qur'an, وَنُقَلِّبُ أَفْئِدَتَهُمْ وَأَبْصَارَهُمْ كَمَا لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهِ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٍ وَنَذَرُهُمْ فِي طُغْيَانِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ We ask Allah to further honor Mary, our mother in faith and in modesty. If you enjoyed this video, along with all the other content that One Path Network produces, please support us so we can create more beneficial content for the world. Go to onepathnetwork.com and you can support us from as little as $1 a day. Jazakumullah khair for your support. I like how he put it or termed it as stubborn rejection. Because sometimes we're going to ask for signs, we're given signs, but we're going to be so stubborn enough and say, but that, that always happens and this happens. Or, I mean, that's so obvious or something like that. And that's that. We're missing out on learning new things because we want to be stubborn. We don't want to take in information because we're just so stubborn. And this entire story was just so, so amazing. Um, I wanted to ask, what about Joseph? What do you guys think about Joseph? Who is Joseph to marry? Anyone with information, feel free to comment. And I'll be more than glad to read your comments. And feel free to put your two cents concerning uh, this video's topic. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.